All right, guys, we got to say walking cooler and freezer that's not running. Brand new customer, never been here before. But before we get started, if you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like it. If you don't, make sure you leave me a detailed message as why you didn't. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I went inside and looked at it and talked to the customer because I had never been here before. And basically, he said the freezer wasn't running, but he had previously opened up the freezer door to let the cooler fall out. The cooler is froze up. So he said his freezer wasn't working, but judging from what I'm seeing here, the freezer is in defrost from what I was looking at. It says defrost freezer, and it looks like it is in defrost. Set for about 40 minutes, no termination hooked up, so looks to me like it's probably just doing its thing and he had bad luck, it just happened to hit defrost at the time it, that he was having issues with his cooler. So we'll check that here in a second. That's just waiting for a place to rub out. Look at that. So, and then usually down here. And then the cooler, it needs it needs defrosted. And I don't know, oh, that's great. So we got a fan in here. Interesting. Let's see what we got here. Cooler defrost. Oh, look at this fancy clock. Oh yeah, never seen this one before. No, oh, no pump down either. Just shut it off. There we go. That's great. Not good. Okay, so it looks like we've got some new stuff here. This must be a fairly newer to them because it looks like they've went through and put the instructions there. But that thing completely kills the system and shuts her off. I don't know. If you look at the inside, you'll see that it's got it's got some issues. I can tell already this clock, if that's 15 minutes per ordeal there, that's nowhere near long enough for a timed off defrost. Pump down solenoid on this thing, it would sure be nice. I mean, I've seen it without it, but definitely ain't good on it. I must leak, so they built a little shield there for that there is a solenoid to be on the inside let's go back in there and take a look in there all right so we got a little bit older unit here it defrosts pretty doggone quick which i'm really surprised see that's just a place to rub out not insulated and so we've got control there which are running about normal temperatures and that goes down there to the end which I don't see any solenoid valves I wonder if they're running that all the way back to the contactor and just shutting it off at the contactor okay here's the freezer it's got some defrost issues obviously it uh, Probably started to freeze up pretty good when they brought in that warm air. I don't know how long this has been going on. I'm gonna have to ask them. <laughs> They've had to wire the defroster heater elements on with wire. Temperature control back there, no cover on it. It's high voltage. This one actually has a solenoid valve. Oh wow, look at that. No Romex connector, just run that Romex wire right through there. Alright, so I got this other side off, and I'm seeing two wires go to the fans. These other two come in come up top and loop down. And I think back to the compressor, I bet you, but it's hard to see if that's. Got two extra wires. I was hoping this thing didn't shut the fans off when it when it when the thermostat was happy. Uh, this hodgepodge wiring. All right, so we're back out here. It's doing its three cycles before it starts. They said it's been happening for a while. From what I'm seeing, it doesn't look like it has any type of uh, 
pump down solenoid or anything like that. Between that and the short defrosts and all the other stuff, I could only imagine. The side glass looks to be full. That's promising so far. Compressed oil we got here. We got POE oil, so I'm hoping this is 134A now, since I got the POE oil in there. Hopefully. We got one shot in the freezer. That's replacement for that. This there's just so many things. I mean, if I was to fix everything I see wrong here, they'd think I was taking advantage of them. I'm gonna have to just like get it going first and then just let them know, look, you got all kinds of issues. Alright, at least we can verify that it is an R12 TXD. I wire tied that to there. I'll keep it from shaking. This really needs to be insulated. All right, so I turned that up. I wanted to see what it uh, what it does. Verify the fans do stay on. Go outside and see if it's off outside. All right, so the big thing here is I talked to the owner, told him what all I want to do, because I don't want them to think that we're trying to just sell them a bill of sale here. Uh, this came on about 45. I mean, we could have a thermostat sticking on. And as slow as this thing is to get it where you want it at, I mean, we're going we're to run it for a bit. I'm going to set it up here right about 38 area, and we'll see whether or not it's accurate. This should start cooling down now. We're going to insulate this. Like I said, the coil looks clean and clear. I could probably make this thing loop through the conduit and back, and we could put a solenoid back at the unit because we're only probably 30 foot away from it. And then we could pump it down as long as that has pumped down solenoid in it. Freezer's been down for a while, is what he said. So it sounds to me like it might be stuck in defrost because, like, as I mentioned, that clock has not moved since I marked it. And uh, kind of can't tell if uh, God only knows what's behind this door number one. But yeah, they're they're interested in even getting a quote on just replacing it. It looks like it's still melting. I hate rushing it out of defrost. I'm gonna go out and make sure this thing's got power. It's got issues. So we'll get it figured out. Biggest thing was just talking to the customer and letting them know why and what you're wanting to do and let them make their decision. And then you just note what you've recommended and, and then uh, kind of go from there. Uh, this looks like it's set for a 10 degree temperature with the 10 degree swing, so they're holding 10 to zero. That's not good. It's not even the right thermostat. I suppose you could do zero. Yeah, you could do zero on that, and then it would go down to negative 10. So they really need to push that lower, but I have a feeling that they're having a hard time hitting temperature. But their peas here, or whatever that is, beef stew, it's frozen, so it's been working. It sounds like they wasn't having too many issues prior to. You can kind of tell that the food's still frozen. So. All right, so we just checked our clock and uh, just checking over it. We have no power to it. So we either lost a fuse or something. Their solution from whoever's been working on it prior to has been to cycle the power off because this thing has been tripping probably the high pressure limit because there's no airflow in here and uh coil's clean but they need to get this air out of here i mean otherwise it's just recirculating on itself it's just uh not good i mean you got this one here kicking it right out going down to this one if you're not getting this air out of here this disconnect box here, it's been uh, burned up on the left hand side. Let's see whether we got power coming into this thing. Nope, no power coming in. So it goes up to that conduit. It's in the breaker box somewhere back here in the back, I hope. Let's see if we can go find it. All right, checking at the ground, I didn't get anything, so at least we know it ain't dead short right away, but we can go ahead and go see what we got going on. Oh boy. Wow. Wow. Wash, freeze.
freezer. The freezer looks like two. I wonder if it's a different freezer. Oh, the freezer looks like they might have... I wonder if they got... Ooh, that felt weird. I don't care for that. Oh boy. You can't... You can't do that. Let's go out there and see if it's running. It was tripped. It's running now. So that'd probably be nice. That was in a... Uh... Okay, so it's pumping down. Okay, there's that. I wonder if they got the heaters. I bet they got the heaters tied in with it, so... It's all being pedaled off the breaker at the same time. So it could have been overloaded, or it could be some of this scary looking stuff here. I may have missed this, but these fans are running backwards. Watch which way they go. So they're running the wrong direction. They're backhanding the air into the condenser. I'm gonna go ahead and let this pump down. The amperage up here is 12 and 17, so we gotta go check the breakers, see what they're rated at. Looks like 10 gauge wire, so we Looks like we got the capacity for it, just I don't know what the breaker is. And with them not being truly three phase breaker, it should all be uh, one big uh, break at one time. And it's just wow, so many things. See that? Should be going that way, pulling the air. Same thing here. Equally did both wrong. All right, so this green wire, which is a power wire there, they wrapped it with black tape. You can see the wire move really easy, so that's probably loose as a goose. I checked amperage on it, it's pulling about 8 amps. So I was wondering whether or not this uh, that's tight, but man, and there it don't wiggle no more. Okay, so we got back on the cooler here. Our head pressure right now is 200, we're on 134A. Suction was 14.5, uh, read 16 over there, so it's within a two pounds. I want to see if this thing will pump down and shut off, which it has a obviously a pressure transducer on it that should shut it down. Head pressure's going up, which means we're going to have a hard time pumping it down. Yeah, that's not good. But it does shut off, even though the pressure's really weird. I would say it probably tripped out, it's hard to say. What do they got here? It's blinking. High pressure. So yeah, basically it's tripping on a high pressure. Wow. So if we put a solenoid back here, either it's overcharged, which is very possible, this is what you call walking in on a landmine. You know what? Let's see. Let's see where we're at here on this thing. Let's warm it up and see if we can figure out how much we got inside that thing. All right, so we come back in here to the freezer. It looks like we got all the ice off of this. And check the back side here. Yeah, the back side's all good to go. I can't see it, but you can. So. Got a little bit there on that suction line there, but I'm not gonna worry about that right now. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kick this thing back on so we can keep temperature. The cooler, it's probably not cold air. I think we just mainly need to make sure the thermostat's not sticking and then fix this pump down issue because it, you know, let's go take a look there. So we removed about one pound area and it brought our pressures down to a little more reasonable. But I tried pumping it down and it still don't work. We're running 83 pounds, or we're running 83 degrees into the condenser, which is what we got a thermometer down there for. I checked our cut in and cut out, so I made a small adjustment to that. All right, so far we've taken out three and a half pounds. And when you watch it here, you can see right where we're at. So starts to get a little warmer there. So 
80% would be right around that ballpark. Been doing some adjustments on my cut in and cut out also. They were at default. I like to see my evaporator have to be above freezing before it kicks in. I can see why this thing would probably freeze up. You throw in a thermostat possibly that's not accurate on top of tripping high head pressure, you know, you're gonna, gonna have some issues. All right, so we reached temperature. I turned it all the way up to about 40 something there before we even could get it. And we were running 32 degrees in here. So to say the least, that thing's off by 10 degrees, not counting the differential. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and get him a new thermostat on there. Just gonna put on traditional. About 44 in here, 46, somewhere in that ballpark. So we got it all in. Got this all insulated up, which end up having to use split insulation and then wire tied around that subcooler deal there. So we got the thermostat bolt mounted back here in the back. We're gonna turn her down. The thing that sucks is they got the compressor going high, high amperage right through the control made sure that this wasn't bent because sometimes you get these bent on there and that will throw the uh, back off and then that makes it bind the bimetal inside there. All right, so the freezer's running about 14 degrees, so it's come down quite a bit. That ice cream needs taken out, it's empty. Yeah, ice cream's one thing it does not like mild temperatures that's for sure it likes well below zero they said that dripping stuff only happened after they opened up the cooler so now I'm not as concerned about it um, they're wanting prices on potentially just replacing all this equipment because they know that it's been uh, band-aided for quite a long time and uh, so we're gonna get them that I'm not gonna do a bunch of repairs when they're considering doing that all I'm gonna do is make sure that we did the most common things that we knew we needed to do, which that thermostat there was definitely one of them that we needed to do. So you can see the door seals are not the greatest. All right, so we went ahead and got everything unhooked from it. We've been checking the sight glass. Everything's full on this thing. It just finally shut off. So I'm gonna go in and check the thermostat. First thermostat I put on was just as bad as the one I replaced as far as accuracy. So hopefully this new one's better. I got the numbers off these fan blades. We're gonna see if we can get the opposite rotation. I hate seeing them buy brand new motors when they were installed the wrong, somebody installed the wrong motors to begin with. Um, you know, they probably are not the right horsepower, so who knows? Can't even really check amper draw and be accurately, and be accurate as to whether or not it's gonna over amp them and get the right one in there. Because I mean, yeah, it's backhanding it, but my head pressure on this freezer was running like 325. So between that and then they use in one shot, which is, you know, a cheap alternative, we've got a little bit of bubbles in there. So I don't carry one shot. Myself, I would convert it over to 404A and be done with it, which is what they should have done to begin with. Um, you know, it's just, there's so much hodgepodgeness. You got disconnects and stuff that are just whacked, but I'm gonna go inside, double check that temperature control, and then we're gonna wrap this up. Now, back to this breaker that I first seen. These are my cooler fans, this red breaker. The freezer compressor is a single phase. The walk-in cooler compressor is also single phase. So they just are using whatever breaker they had. So that breaker is sized correctly. It's 30 amp, looks like 10 gauge wire. Um, amperage wise, we're, we're in spec for that. So we might have you know, between the high head pressure and everything else and just with not using an interlock relay to stage the defrost heaters after the compressor shuts off, that's just pulling a lot of extra amperage on it. Well, somebody was standing there with the door open, so I just shot my temperature readings all to hell. So now we're uh, not even accurate again. It would have been nice to have gotten, gotten in here before that happened. So anyhow, like I said, I had to change this thermostat, ended up moving the bulb over here I don't know if they got heat sneaking in through here you can see where it's falling apart I mean it's just it's just got some issues freezer this don't help if they're not gonna shut the door so and 
I don't think this thing can even hit temperature anyhow. Um, yeah, if they're not getting that door shut, they're letting all that humidity in. So, there's just so many problems. So many problems. And you can see the doors. I mean, just there's so many. And you can't, you can't just fix all this stuff in one trip, or economically. So it's dropping back down. We're at 40. Should be pretty good there. I'm gonna leave it right around 38 area. Might go to 35 just to be safe. Put her at 35. We'll see what uh, how things go. They can always adjust that themselves if they need to. And uh, they can go from there. Like I said, if you guys enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe, click the notification bell, and until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.